All right, hello everybody. We're on page 163 talking about chromatography. Uh, this is not the first time you've heard about chromatography, and guess what? It won't be the last either. Uh, chromatography uh, originally was separating the colors of pigments from plants. Chroma means color, uh, and graph, of course, means to graph it. Um, so in chromatography, the process of using a solid surface with particular chemical properties to attract particular molecules is what how chromatography works. Once again, the way this process works, and I'm going to pull my, my pen out, is we have a product solution that comes in, and it comes in here. And as it goes through these beads, and it's not going to go very fast through these beads, part of the product is going to get left behind. And so when this comes out, and I'm just going to pick a random color, we're not doing any special color scheme here, it comes out and that product is now no longer with it, the product is stepped back on the column. Now, so what we end up with here then is we end up with a column that has our product, but we don't want that. We want our product. So we now are going to take a brand new solvent and we're going to bleed that solvent through the line and into the solvent and when it does that it's actually going to pick up our particles so let's use red to say the red represents sorry about that uh, the particles that we have going on here and as the and then it's going to pick them well I didn't mean for it to do that uh, it's going to pull them out and through into the new solvent this may seem crazy it's like really we're, we're we have it dissolved and now we don't have it dissolved and now we do have it dissolved and it's just a lot of back and forth um, and I actually stutter at that time. Um, so, but what we're doing is usually it's a complicated mixture in the very beginning. So it may be five or six things at least that are all together. And then we only have the product in the column. And then when we separate it through, we're actually ending up with just the product. And it's not always that straightforward. Sometimes you have to do multiple chromatography um, elutions to have this happen. But chromatography is indeed very, very useful. Um, on page 164, it is one of the most powerful separation methods. It can use to be used to separate practically anything. Um, the columns can be built to separate just about any molecules, and they can get extremely, extremely expensive, depending on how specific you want to separate certain molecules. Um, in many chemical and bioprocessing operations, chromatography is typically used to separate the product from impurities. It's also used to help concentrate the product. The volume of the final product is often much smaller than the volume that was loaded on the column. Different combinations of solvents and resins are used to separate different kinds of molecules. The most common type of resin used in chemical and bioprocessing operations is ion exchange resin. And that basically means that if you're a positive, you attract negatives and vice versa. So we're going to... Uh, in with chromatography there uh, there's lots there's different types of home chromatography there's liquid chromatography there's gas chromatography uh, lots of different types of chromatography depending on what you're trying to look and look to do um, there uh, really quickly just to kind of browse through the next parts of your book while we're here uh, page 169 is about a uh, field trip and I would love for us to take a field trip but I don't think we're going to do it with this hybrid course set up and they're just trying to give you some documents that would be useful to discuss the plant that we go visit and see how all these things that we've talked about actually do apply to, in a real life environment. I would like to talk about the process diagrams. So I think I'm going to stop here and make a short video about that. Um, and then we'll pretty much be done for this unit.